Who will lose JobKeeper next? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got a new stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article discussing changes to JobKeeper. Now we saw that, well, the coalition was not afraid to pull the pin on JobKeeper early for the childcare sector. Now, is this foreshadowing what will happen to other industries? How will it affect tourism, which has been hit really hard? Frankly, is non-existent at the moment. There were times where we couldn't even drive more than 50 kilometers away from our house. Now, sure, the tourism industry wasn't going gangbusters this time of year, but you know, school holidays are fast approaching. They're fast approaching. I'd love to go on a camping trip. And I think we can now. But you still can't cross the New South Wales Queensland border for some reason. They need to start looking at at uh, just freeing our movement to help get the economy going. But let's have a look at these JobKeeper changes. And let's ask the question, who will lose it next? Do you think all industries are going to be safe? Do you think they'll keep it going after the September period, or will it evolve or mesh into UBI? Now, I know some people are advocating for that, and it sounds good, but I'm too skeptical. I think we'll get a hunt, a you know, raft of different versions of UBI for every special interest or group that can lobby politicians. It's just how these things happen. Maybe I'm going too grey in the beard and getting too old and cynical. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe, you know, I just know how it's going to happen. Let me know your take on that, guys. So let's have a look at this. JobKeeper changes are on the way, and businesses other than childcare could stop getting payments for workers. And this is written by Nassim Karem. Now, there's a, te there, there's a telling line in the rules surrounding the federal government's $70 billion JobKeeper wage subsidy that indicates the treasurer rev reverses the right to make change reserves the right to make changes to the scheme well yeah it states an entitlement to job keeper payment under this part may be cancelled revoked terminated varied or made subject to conditions by or under later legislation which seems fair and reasonable this was not designed to be a permanent solution this was an emergency measure to keep these businesses going, to maintain the relationship between these businesses and the employees. And I'd honestly say to reduce the burden on our Centrelink as well. Because think about it, they're using all the established businesses to manage these payments, to keep these people paid. But what would have happened if all of these people suddenly hit Centrelink? Could you just imagine how much of a disaster that would have been? Maybe it's just my cynicism coming through. An entitlement to JobKeeper payment under this part, maybe I've already read that, maybe cancelled or revoked. The scheme, which has benefited about 3.5 million workers via a $1,500 fortnightly wage subsidy paid to businesses, was meant to operate for six months to the end of September. But it is currently being reviewed by Treasury, and the results will be made public on July 23rd, when the government will provide an economic and fiscal update. After the government announced that payments to workers in the childcare sector would end this month, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg has not ruled out that other businesses could face the same fate, which makes sense. They want to get, well, they want to make sure people don't wind up getting used to it. You don't want to breed bad habits, guys. Getting paid more, in some cases, for doing nothing than working, you know, it's a pretty sweet gig. We will be looking to see how to strengthen and improve that program, Mr. Frydenberg told reporters on Tuesday. ABC News spoke to economists who said it's likely that a number of businesses would also see payments cut off earlier, while others could see extensions beyond September. Treasury's review comes as Australia's economy reopens sooner than expected, after the rate of pandemic infections and deaths in Australia fell short of initial projections. There have been 102 coronavirus deaths in Australia to date, and the rate of active cases has been on the decline, allowing individuals and businesses in different states to steadily return to work. Treasury Secretary Stephen Kennedy on Tuesday took responsibility for the $60 billion overestimation 
of the Morrison government's JobKeeper scheme. The initial cost was estimated to be $130 billion. So that's good. That means you don't need to go into debt to spend that money. Just, just don't spend it. Don't spend it, government. I know, I know that goes against every fiber in your being, but don't spend it. You also told a Senate committee that early on it had been hard to gauge what measures were needed to contain the spread of the pandemic domestically. But since the economy has done better than expected, Treasury now predicted unemployment will be the order of 8%. We have been steadily revising down our expectations of how high the unemployment rate will be because of the fact that the health scenario has continued to improve, he told the committee. And this is the thing, particularly with the protests that have occurred. If we don't see a spike from that, you know, that's a perfect test case because there's some people that doesn't realize they're infected, goes along in their protest. If we don't see a spike emerge from that, then one could argue that more the economy should be opened even faster. Doesn't that make sense? And it, that's the only hope you have of mitigating this unemployment and underemployment crisis that we're facing here. Australia is hitting, hitting a recession. It's going to hit hard. And we need to get open as fast as we can, even just on a local level. So businesses could self-report to receive JobKeeper. Stephen Hamilton is a tax economist and visiting fellow at the Tax and Transfer Policy Institute at the Australian National University. He told ABC News the JobKeeper scheme should never have been placed in place for six months. It's very difficult to see the federal government paying all this money all the way through to September, Dr. Hamilton said. It seems to be a very large cost that's no longer achieving what it's supposed to be what it was supposed to achieve. He said there will be a way in which the government scales back the payments for other firms before September. Dr. Hamilton suggests one way to do that will be to put the onus on businesses to self-report to the ATO at the end of the month how much money they made in the past fortnight and how much money they expect to make in the next month. He said businesses already report this information, but it could now be used to track whether they should or shouldn't continue to receive JobKeeper payments. So here's the problem, guys. If they insta if they if they just have you know a sharp cliff where you lose JobKeeper, you know, oh, you, if you haven't lost your thirty percent revenue, there's going to be incentives for businesses to underreport and to there will be a point where it's an incentive for them to stop doing business. <laughs> I mean, this is a messy situation. It depends on the number of staff you have. It's what happens when you intervene in the market, guys. Dr. Hamilton said businesses would need to declare in good faith if they expect revenue to go down 30% for a month. It's very politically palatable at it ending the scheme for some only takes money away from firms that don't need it, he said. There would actually be a large number of businesses now that are being overcompensated. They only had one bad month but got 1500 per fortnight per employee for six months. And I think, frankly, he's 100% right there. I think some of the viewers of the channel have mentioned in comments that they're, you know, they're still getting it. Business has picked up again, you know, and, and here's the thing. If people don't take it, they'll be at a competitive disadvantage to other businesses that do. This is what happens here. You've got to take the money or else you're going to get harmed. It makes sense to take money away from firms that are massively uh, profiteering. He makes it sound bad. Prof making a profit is good. He said if a firm was wrong about the next month's revenue, they would self-report the following month that they had actually made a profit and then see their payments cut off. This would lessen the likelihood that people gain the system and it would be easy for the ATO to track. So a call for hospitality, tourism to have an extension. The childcare sector was the first to see the JobKeeper payment come to an end sooner than anticipated. On Monday, Federal Education Minister Dan Tian announced the pay would end from July 20 for employees of child care providers. And here's the thing, guys, this is the problem with this is it is another element of uncertainty. It's another element of uncertainty in, you know, in drastically, drastically uncertain times. Instead of JobKeeper, the government will allocate $708 million to pay child care services, a transition payment of 25% of their fee revenue from July 13 until September 27. Childcare providers will need to meet certain conditions to qualify for the transition payment. Grattan Institute economist Daniel Wood 
said she was concerned about changes made to the wage subsidy for the childcare sector. The in reintroduction of fees would be hard for parents that have lost their jobs, and this could impact the viability of some centres. Um, why are parents who've lost their jobs sending their kids to childcare? If you've lost your job and you're at home, you don't need childcare, so you save money on those fees. Co correct me if, if I'm wrong there, guys. That, that seems pretty obvious. However, she agreed that the federal government did not need to broadly reassess the payment and cut it off before September for firms that had seen their revenue recover. So she's arguing that, again, you've got to cut from the people who are recovered. But remember, the economy is going to take a big hit in September too, guys. <laughs> she said if it was deemed that a firm had recovered, they should be given one month's notice. But, but then again, it could change in a month. But you'd have to do it on a firm-by-firm -firm basis because there will be very different stories within sectors based on the states they are in, she said. Noting some states had eased restrictions faster and more strongly than others. And that's the thing. There's a whole lot of doing it on a firm-by-firm -firm basis is a lot of extra rigmarole. Is it worth it? If the aim is to, frankly, stimulate the economy. I mean, they're handing out money left, right and center to housing. Miss Woods, who argued that hospitality and tourism businesses that had not seen their businesses return to normal should receive the payment beyond September. And here's the thing, you've got to remember guys, this was a forced closing down by the state forced on these businesses. So they have, well, I would argue, they, are, they should be liable for forcing that to happen. They should compensate these businesses. While I don't, I don't appreciate the state intervening, I see this as financial compensation for forced closures. What would happen if, you know, were they even necessary? That's irrelevant. That's completely irrelevant. It's happened, so they're liable. Dr. Hamilton agreed some businesses would still require JobKeeper since there were still restrictions limiting how many people can be inside a business premises, such as a restaurant, so they would be operating at reduced capacity. Exactly. And we've got viewers here who own restaurants who have mentioned just how unviable it is, reduced numbers. And the big problem for many businesses was the international borders were still closed and would likely remain so until next year, meaning they would have to continue to rely on JobKeeper to stay afloat. We need stimulus as the economy is not going to get back to normal immediately and pulling too much support out too quickly could be quite damaging. Well, here's the thing, guys. How long do we stimulate these businesses? And is this propping up zombie companies that were on the verge? It is a really messy situation. And we've got these interventionist policies with gov government forcing closures on businesses. So <laughs> we'll have to see, guys. A whole lot of unknown. And how are businesses going to respond to this in the future? How many people will this be the straw that broke the camel's back and saying, you know what? Stuff it. I'm, a, I'm out. I'm out. I've had enough. Getting out of it. We'll have to see. As always, please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support us a bit extra, there's a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>